Okay, so we're talking about basic primitives in OpenSCAD. Uh, one of the basic primitives we have is a object called cube, and you can pass it uh, just numbers, you know, x, y, and z. And that's really all you need to know to get a cube to function, but you're going to have to pass it information. If you press uh, function 5 or control 5 or command 5, whatever's working for your computer, it's going to generate the primitive um, in just an arbitrary scale, so you can see that it's actually just one by one by one because it doesn't know what x, y, and z are. We're going to go with the standard one, two, three block that's common for machining. And so then you can see, in fact, we have a one thickness, two thickness, three thickness side for the cube. Uh, standard machining operations love this for just calibration. And it's great because then you can get a sense of where you are in your axes. Uh, one thing that's interesting is the cube always justifies to the center of the origin right here. And so if you type center equals true, all of a sudden you go from absolute positioning to relative positioning for your object. So you can define your object as the center of everything. Okay, It's a pretty cool feature. Um, we're going to block this out now and discuss how cylinders work. So we're going to type in cylinder and then um, we've got to define some dimensions. Used to be able to type in height but uh, it doesn't know what that is anymore so we just put in H and we're going to say that our cylinder is 10 millimeters tall and then we're going to dictate the radius which is oh, we'll say 8 and the number of faces uh, we can define as anything. Uh, 64 will be enough to make a nice cylinder. And as we hit render, we've got that. Now one thing to consider here is when we define our object's radius as 8, you can see that the radius is 8, but it's in two separate directions. So we're thinking, usually defining our cylinder, we measure with calipers on the outside. So actually when we write radius, this number should be over 2. And then we have a diameter of 8, which is generally what most people want. Uh, one of the interesting things you can do here is you can add a top and a bottom radius, R1 and R2, and have them be different numbers, um, which is good because then you can play around with the concept of cones. Okay, And once again, 12 should be over 2. And we have a nice tapered cone. If you want this to be uh, coming to a point, you would just dictate this number be very, very small or, you know, to invert it the other way, you could just go back and do the same thing by declaring zero. That's fine too. So there's your cone. Easy to do. One of the more interesting things about the cylinder feature is as you dictate the facet number, all of a sudden you can switch to something like a tapered cone, uh, which comes in really handy if you're trying to do bolt recesses for hexagonal bolts. Um, and sometimes you can draft them so that they're easy to press fit, but they're a little tighter on the bottom. And so that's, you know, some of the cool things you can do with your basic primitive. Uh, last thing, of course, is you can always decide to center it around the origin by doing center equals true, bringing it back to that 0, 0, 0 position for the core. And if you want to negate that at any point, you can always just type in false. Okay. One of the hardest things about doing OpenSCAD is making sure that your syntax is correct and that you have your commas and apostrophes and uh, signifiers where they're supposed to be. So always make sure to check your spelling if it's not rendering, but um, that's how to work with two basic primitives. So we're going to save this, save as, and we'll call this primitives, and hit save.